your word is proclaimed to us on this day, that we may be transformed in our own discipleship in Christ the King. Amen. The first reading today comes from the last book of the Bible, Revelation, chapter 1, verses 4b to 8, and can be found on page 245 of your Pew Bible. Listen to John's words of revelation while he was on the island of Patmos. Listen to his revelation of who Christ is and will always be. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves, loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. On his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This ends the first reading. From Revelation's declaration of Jesus as the faithful witness and ruler who makes us to be a kingdom serving God, we turn now to Jesus' own account of his kingship and kingdom recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. It can be found on page 113 of your pew Bible. It's a familiar scene. Jesus has just been arrested and is being questioned by Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? Listen for God's word. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of the Lord. To catch a better grasp of this passage, it might be helpful to put yourself into a movie mindset with lights, camera, action. The reading from John's Gospel is actually act two of a dramatic courtroom-like drama comprised of seven acts. Jesus' Jewish accusers and Pontius Pilate the Roman governor of Judea, wrangle for power over the situation throughout these seven scenes described in two chapters of Mark's Gospel. Knowing Pilate is the local representative of the greatest world power of that time, and the only one with the authority to crucify, Jesus' accusers work to convince Pilate of Jesus' guilt of blasphemy against the state. Yet when Pilate, the man with authority to determine life or death, 
summons Jesus to ask, guilty or not guilty? The drama unfolds in unexpected ways. One has to ask, who is actually on trial here, Jesus or Pilate? Twice Pilate asks, are you the king of the Jews? Twice Jesus redirects the question, both times by reframing Pilate's point of reality. If you are a friend of Reformation history or happen to see the movie Luther, you might be familiar with how reformer Martin Luther, how he responded through his truthful, to his truthful inquisitors, how he responded truthfully to them, creating for himself and others new possibilities for living out a convicted faith. Before colleagues, princes, and church leaders at the Diet of Worms Tribunal, Luther was asked whether he would recount, recant his writings against the teachings of the Catholic Church. Luther replied, Unless I am convinced by scripture and plain reason, my conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and will not recant. Here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God. This answer of truth-telling opened the door to badly needed reforms within the church. Pilate, in effect, is asking Jesus to confess or recant. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus ignores the question and responds with another. Is that what you believe, Pilate? Or did others suggest this? Suddenly, the tables are turned. It is almost as if Jesus now becomes the inquisitor, the one with the power. If we look at, Jesus, at Pilate's situation, we see he does not have much freedom in action. Although bestowed with great political power as the governor of all Judea, Pilate's career rises or falls with his ability to maintain control of the masses under his governorship. In effect, Pilate is trapped. If he is to maintain his high position in the Roman Empire, he cannot go against the influential Jewish leaders who have much authority over the people. Fear then shapes Pilate's decision-making rather than being guided by his true convictions. Fear allows him to maintain the illusion of power in the place where he serves. If our actions are guided by fear in order to maintain the illusion of power or prominence, what does that look like? If one is a politician, afraid of not being reelected, it could mean that one never admits a mistake. Better to smooth things over by saying one was perhaps misled rather than being authentic with one's con convictions. If one has many creature comforts, cars or houses or the opportunity to travel, yet one is afraid of losing standing in the community because of the loss of money or of a family secret, then one might continue the illusion that all is well, only privately suffering in uncertainty. If a congregation is afraid of losing members and influence in a community, it might be tempted to temper its message and its mission as a measure to maintain its position. Pilate knew these fears and felt trapped. 
He did not respond to Jesus' invitation to think differently and to share the truth of his situation. But he asked Jesus again, so are you a king? Not really interested in the terms of an earthly king, Jesus describes himself in terms of kingship and describes also what his kingdom is like. For this reason, Jesus says, I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. That is the sign of his kingship, to testify to the truth. And everyone who belongs to the truth, he says, listens to my voice. Jesus talks in a strange language for Pilate, who operates in maintaining illusions and maintaining the power that he has. But the mission of Jesus is to strip away illusion, to offer him the opportunity to share the truth and to be about what is real. But being disillusioned poses an enormous threat to Pilate because that is what he fears the most. Over this Thanksgiving holiday, I had the opportunity to think about fear in a different way. Earlier in John's Gospel, John, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And those who listen and follow my voice will be protected and cared for by me. Visiting family on a farm in North Carolina, I had the opportunity to see how sheep act. It was a small herd of about 14. And the caretaker of the sheep said, stay back here. They're a little bit skittish. So we did. And she called to them and brought them some food. And first one came, and then all of the others followed behind quickly, running to the familiar voice and the food that they were interested in. But as they saw the movements of those of us that were in the background who were interested to come forward, they quickly dashed away, fearful of what they don't know. Perhaps humans are a little bit like these sheep. But Jesus is trying to define for them, trying to teach them to move away from fear and move towards truth. What is truth? Truth is something we do. Some th truth is a stimulant for faithful living and witness, not just contemplation. That was how theologian Dorothea Sola defined truth. And she says we can reach this truth, this way of belonging to truth and following God's voice by doing something what she calls discerning obedience, by going around with our eyes wide open, by not being afraid to stop and listen and to discern where God's voice is in each situation, where God is calling us to go. Jesus talks about listening to the voice as being a part of his kingdom and the way to belong to it. Our passage from Revelations defines God's kingdom in a different way. It says that Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and ruler of the kings of the earth, came to those who came to show us love and to free us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, made us to be priests serving his God and Father. Dorotea Sola picks up on this, that to follow God's kingdom and to follow that voice, we are to be doing faithful living. Yes, that includes things like giving an extra gift at Christmas time or sharing our meal 
with those who don't have as much, but it might also be calling us to do more, to go out into the world with eyes wide open and to look at the systems that cause people to be in poverty or to live without. It might call us to something we never imagined. As we talked about this passage in our Sunday school class today, one person noted at how the destruction created through the tornado in Tuscaloosa, destruction of churches or of people's lives, has also created an opportunity for people to live and to see things differently, to be aware of problems in our community that they may not have been aware of before. The passage in Revelations also says that God's kingdom is not just in the future, it is also now. For it says, God, the one who is, who was, and who is to come. On this Christ the King Sunday, we are invited to leave our fears behind, to listen to God's voice, where that might be leaning, leading us, so that we too may belong to this kingdom, kingdom of truth, kingdom of truth tellers, and kingdom that calls us to be priests, to act and to do. Pilate could not escape from his fears or his disillusion. Pilate continued down the road, and yes, he did decree Jesus' crucifixion and death. But it was a death and a decree that was undone by his later resurrection. As we attempt to live our lives as faithful followers, not only this Christ the King Sunday, but every Sunday, we are invited to think about who is in charge of our lives. We are invited to see, are we living with illusions or are we really listening to the reality, to what it is God is calling us as individuals, as a community of faith, as a body of Christ in this world? Are we really listening and understanding to God? So as you leave this place, remember Jesus' invitation to us all. He offers us the testimony of truth. He offers us to live in a posture so that we can hear and listen. Are you willing to belong? Thanks be to God. We are called to be witnesses. Let us do so as we stand.